My name is Wanda Sloan. I'm with the Office of Neighborhood Relations. It's springtime again, so it's once again time for the 2015 Neighborhood Mini Grant. Um, instead of going out into the, the different communities this year, we're actually going to do our training online. And that's what I'm going to do is take you step by step through the PowerPoint presentation. At the end, there will be a form for you to fill out and, and you can submit it electronically. That way we have proof that you did go through the training. There has been some minor changes, so I just wanted to make sure everybody has the greatest opportunity for their applications to be reviewed. These are some topics we're going to go over. Who's eligible? The purpose of the funding, your neighborhood needs, application, the scoring process, implementation and goal writing. That'll be the, probably the only time that I read verbatim, but those are the topics we'll be going over. Who is eligible? Neighborhood civic associations, neighborhoods that are formed and has a board or has some sort of committee in place, and homeowner associations. Neighborhood watches and special taxing districts. You do have to be registered with the Office of Neighborhood Relations and we'll cover that. The purpose of the funding is to strengthen your neighborhood. And when you think of that, you need to think of your neighborhood overall. What will strengthen our neighborhood and what will bring us together? That is why that the Board of County Commissioners has continued the funding for the neighborhood mini grants is because of the funding, we're hoping to strengthen our neighborhoods and continue the education and the um, coming together of neighborhoods to strengthen you. Applications should demonstrate the community support. That means, how did you let your community know this? We don't want it to just be a board action or one or two people that make a decision. This is actually something that will bring a community together and strengthen the neighborhood. How did you get a buy-in from your neighborhood? Did you have a meeting? Did you send it out and take a vote? Just let us know and that is demonstrated in your application. Neighborhood needs, this is important. Neighborhood needs, because of the funding, the funding source it has been reduced some. Um, it will still remain $2,500 for neighborhoods, but you will have to demonstrate an actual need for your neighborhood. What do you need to bring your neighborhood together? What do you need to strengthen it? Is it beautification? Is it a, a fundraiser for your your community to um, increase dues, incre increase presentation, just whatever the need is. Clearly state how that you determine the need. And in your proposal, make sure that it is written clearly what your need is, what you're proposing, and how the grant would help you to do that. Additional requirements, as I said earlier, you do have to be registered with the Office of Neighborhood Relations. Um, it's easy to find out if you're registered currently. You can go online and these are the websites to neighbor Hillsborough County and you can go on to the Neighborhood Relations website. See if you're listed in the current data that's on, on the page. If not, then you can go on and register your, your association and it will come directly to me and that way we can get you registered and you'll be el available and eligible for the grant. As I covered, you must be registered with my office. Demographics, what is dem demographics? How many homes are in your neighborhood? How many children are in your neighborhood? And you're thinking, why do you want to know about the children? Because one of our partners is the Children's Board. And a lot of the programs that they will choose will be because children are involved or because it benefits the children. Tell us if you're urban or if you're a suburban neighborhood. And it, it helps not only explain the needs of your neighborhood, but it gives us an idea of what type of neighborhood and why you may be asking for certain things. Um, on the application, it asks for additional contacts and you're thinking, why? The reason for that is you're filling this out now but in the beginning of the year is usually when a lot of associations go through changes in their presidents and changes in their board. Make sure that we have a contact that is a constant contact. It can be a management company. It can be somebody that doesn't change on the board or a vice president that you know is going to be on the board. Make sure that we have an additional contact so that if the board people do change that we have somebody that we can, can call on. Um, your boundaries and your locations, a lot of people think boundaries, what are meets and bounds, that's not what we're needing. Just go ahead and tell us if you're on the corner of 301 and 
Gibsonton Drive or if you're on the corner of Fletcher and Del Mabry, the boundaries of the roads that surround your neighborhood. Project name, a lot of people forget this and it's not your association name. Your association name does go on the application, but what are you calling your project? Is this the beautification for Carrollwood Village? Is it the um, fundraiser and summer bash for Brussel Boy? It, that, that's how we want you to tell us what your project is. Give it a name, give it an identity, because that's what you're gonna be pushing toward. Community description, we've covered that before. Tell us where you're at, where you're located. Give me an idea in the county if I don't know off the top of my head where you're at. Uh, tell me you're in Carrollwood or you're in Northwest Hillsborough County or you're in South County. And as we said before, be sure to include the number of children because of the consideration of the children's board. Residential notification, this is what we covered uh, a few minutes ago and I want to make sure to go over it again. Make sure that you describe the resident's participation. This is a grant that requires a matching grant. It doesn't require money um, from the association, but it does require participation. Uh, you're not going to be able to fill out an application, submit it for beautification, hire a landscaping company to come out and put your trees in, and then submit, it, submit your receipts and Hillsborough County give you the money. This is actually participation. Tell me how the other neighborhood's going to participate. If they're, if they're going to be sending out uh, notices, if they're going door to door, if they're planning a party, if they're planting the trees and the plants. If you can't plant the trees, you can at least plant the plants. Somehow there has to be participation and it has to be a community participation. Um, and you have to tell us exactly how that you're, you're actually going to be involved in that. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't give other sources of money. That is definitely great. If you're using some of your funding from your community, if you have people that are donating, businesses that are donating, hot dogs, whatever, let us know that other, that other source of funding. It doesn't take away from the amount of money that you'll get from the county. It just shows that, that you're out working and, and trying to get as much funding and as much help as you can for your project. Timeline. The timeline has definitely changed a little this year because as you know, I am now the only person in the Office of Neighborhood Relations. And so in order for me to be able to handle the workloads of the applications, this year the deadline for applications to be submitted will be August 8th, no later than 5 p.m. The deadline to wrap up the entire 2015 Neighborhood Mini Grant with all forms required and all payments is July 31st, 2015 at 5 p.m. And you know, a lot of people say, why is there such a time frame? Because we have to review the, the applications, we have to see who's eligible, then you have to go before the committee and let them review the applications. And there's just a lot to it. It has to go before the Board of County Commissioners. So there's an agenda that has to be done. So these time frames are not just time frames I came up with, but they're definitely tight time frames that we have to be able to meet for the approval by the Board of County Commissioners. Prior funding. If you've been funded before, please make sure to say yes and when. It doesn't take away from the fact that you've been funded before. It just lets us know how you were funded, if you completed your, your mini grant, and if you turned in all the forms that were needed. Now, if your association was awarded last year and you did not complete your funding, if you did not complete your grant by spending your money or turning in the required midterm and final with photographs, then you will not be eligible this year. You would have to sit out a full cycle for grants. Make sure that if you have a 2015 neighborhood mini grant, that you have all your forms that are required turned in no later than July 31st, 2015. Project revenue and funding source. Each um, grant will be eligible for $2,500. Doesn't mean that you have to ask for $2,500 or necessarily that you'll be granted the full $2,500. $2,500 is the base grant and the committee and staff will review the needs of the neighborhood as far as what you're requesting your budget. Please keep in mind, and I'll say this again, 
um, as we go through the presentation. You cannot purchase food, drinks, and when I'm saying drinks, any type of uh, water, Coke, soda, anything cannot, funding cannot be used for that. You also cannot use anything that would be considered cash, like gift cards, anything like that cannot be purchased with the mini grant. Um, another thing we need to point out is that if it's something that's going to an individual, it cannot be purchased. It has to be for the good of the community. Proposed expenditures, that's pretty much self-explanatory. Make sure that you put in your budget exactly what you're proposing to, to spend your money on. Document, give us enough detail, don't just put stamps. What are we using the stamps for? Make sure that you're explaining what that is for. Volunteer dollar amount is twenty dollars. That doesn't mean that we're going to that we're going to pay you twenty dollars per hour. It means that for every volunteer that participates in this grant, you can count twenty dollars per hour for what they participate in, whether it be filling out the neighborhood grant, um, helping to plant trees, helping to get sponsors, is $20 per hour. And if you have a question about that, please feel free to contact my office. So volunteer time is $20 per hour. Certification. Please keep in mind that the president of the association must sign the application. No one else will be eligible. So complete your application, have your president sign and turn it in no later than August 8th at 5 p.m. And the reason for that is, is um, a lot of time we have zealous people that want to do projects and the neighborhood is not aware of it. They take it on themselves to do it. It is something that the, that the board has to be aware of or your committee and it has to be signed by the president. This year, the deadline for applications to be submitted will be August 8th no later than 5 p.m. You can fax it to me, you can email it to me, you can submit it online, you can drop it off in person, or you can mail it, however you want to do it. This is your scoring points. They're pretty much self-explanatory. Um, it's 100 points overall. It's in your application how that's broken down. I'm not going to take the time to do that. You're more than welcome to read that over. If you have questions, you can call me. But make sure that you do itemize and explain as much as possible. Implementation, as I spoke of before, we have a review committee that will review the application. Um, it's the someone from the Children's Board, someone from the Duckwell Foundation. There will be an individual from the community. They won't belong to an association per se, but they'll be from the community. There'll be a staff person from Planning Growth Management, and then there'll be um, I'll be there to oversee, but I, I won't be critiquing or qualifying the application since I try to be neutral as much as possible. Um, letters announcing qualifications, letters announcing recommendations, um, and what that means is once we receive your application, we will review them, the um, committee will review them, they will be ranked uh, according to the points and the criteria. You will be notified by letter or by email that you were chosen or you were not chosen as far as qualification points. And that is if you met the criteria of the application itself. Then the board will, the review committee will review it. They'll put the points, they'll make the recommendations of the associations that need to be um, reviewed and then it will go before the Board of County Commissioners for approval. Um, neighborhood Relations staff will contact you. Neighborhood Relations staff is me. I will send you an email or a letter letting you know if you were funded or if you were not funded. Um, one thing that's very important is no money can be spent on these mini grants before a letter of understanding is signed. If there's any money spent prior to the notification that you were awarded money and meeting with me to sign a letter of understanding, Hillsborough County will not honor that. A letter of understanding has to be signed and you have to have a meeting with me before you can spend any money. The total goal of grant writing. Make sure when you're writing this grant, um, I've had people in the past that just made a copy of a prior year's grant, changed it around. 
Um, there is competition with this grant. As you know, any available funding from government or any source is tight now. So make sure when you're writing your grant that you're putting your best foot forward, that you're trying to achieve this and to receive this grant because you will be up against uh, competition. Make sure that it's worthy of the funding and that the idea is clear and concise and that people agree with it. A few closing thoughts. No project expense may incur. I went over that with you. No, you cannot incur any expenses whatsoever before the letter of understanding is signed. If you've applied for a fair in the past or if you've applied for um, a tree grant application in the past through your mini grant process, you can't apply for the same thing or anything similar to that. It has to be new ideas each year. So keep that in mind when you're applying, just because you change the name of it, if it's still a community picnic, it's still a community picnic. Um, so make sure that you keep that in mind, that it cannot be the same project as what you had asked for in the past. Thank you for um, viewing the presentation today. If you have any questions or comments, please contact me, Wanda Sloan, in the Office of Neighborhood Relations. You can call me at 272-5860, or you can email me at sloanw at hillsboroughcounty.org. Thank you.